All right, the um, electric is getting really expensive here, so I'm trying to plan some alternative ways to run some big stuff. So, um, as I was doing before, I wanted to experiment with reactive power, and with this capacitor in line with the uh, live here, this is a microwave um, capacitor, and this true reactive power brings my uh, current down to 40 MAs. Now this 40 MA is the displacement current, so uh, it's not real power. So what happens is um, it's pretty efficient way of dropping the current and creating a new kind of current through displacement current, which is essentially decoupled from the uh, trigger. So what the trigger does with reactive is it keeps the ping pong action going. And um, so like if you were to run an inverter, what I'm getting at it is, is not over unity per se, it's just very efficient because you end up with more than um, just a typical half efficiency because what happens here is the um, transformer here is also in line. I'm going to show you that later. But it's an LC circuit, so it's a um, reactive power stage. So through reactive power, uh, whatever we can do with it, that's available to us. So uh, like if I run an inverter, what that means is true. What we're doing is we're paying for the, it would be like, you know, kind of like if you're energizing an AC transformer without a load, you still got to pay for that very little magnetization energy. It's not very much, but it is indeed statistical when you are using a little bit of energy. It would be similar to that with the addition of the capacitor creating that ping pong action. So what happens is a good part of that um, that that joule of energy basically comes back into the input. So basically you end up with a lot more efficiency than just half. You might end up with the high 90% and if your system is tuned, to perfect resonance, this could be seen as in an LC circuit, the equivalent to superconductivity. So that's why it's interesting to build like Tesla coil and Kappa Gen like configurations like Don Smith was doing using reactive power supplies because that is a key to bring up the potentials true resonance without sacrificing so much loss, maybe just a few percent, which is no big deal because you're making up for it in the potentials, right? Because, you know, it's whatever we can do to break the symmetry, basically. So I'm just testing right now with an inverter, but the whole idea for me would be to use it on the mains power I have here. So by doing that, it's utilizing the mains as a trigger for the displacement current through this capacitor here. So this will limit me to 40 MA. I can't cheat that. That's just the calculation with the uh, reactance value with this microwave capacitor at 60 Hertz. So um, that is what it is. So it's a very good efficient way of uh, gating the current because I want to use near zero. Plus we also have much of that. So if you want to consider that 40 milliamp as a joule or a, a, of energy, as a pulse, well, that pulse, much of it gets sent back to the grid is what I'm getting at. And uh, what we're creating is a new displacement current and that's what I'm locally tapping into. And that's what I wanna use to actually charge a 12 volt car battery. So I was just testing, I had found basically an old piece from an ionizer here. And this is the transformer and DC voltage multiplier. So this is designed for high frequency, very low current. So I reasoned that I could drive this directly with the AC through the um, reactance power supply at 40 MA. So we're still keeping the 110, but we're just dropping and we're using the um, reactive current instead. And sure enough, it really does a good job at, um, I've got the gap here, so it's about one eighth of an inch. And it's pretty strong, so if you understand the potential, this is a good way, so I'm gonna turn the inverter on. And you can see that. And it's pretty loud and snappy, and this is only 40 MA, because we're limiting it there. And what's nice is this is all happening at 60 Hertz, so I wanted to keep the circuitry very simple. So no transistors, this is all magnetics essentially, which is really, really cool. It's, um, and we're doing it 
usually this kind of thing you know you're using microwave transformers and big tesla coils and this is like very very high current kind of stuff here but we're doing it now with 40 ma and those charging capacitors in there for the voltage multiplier is what gives us our jolts or amps a second discharges so the displacement current is inducing the um, high voltage transformer and that current is being uh, regulated and discharged through those capacitors through the gap now obviously i don't want to um charge it directly through the gap i just wanted to give myself an idea of how well this was working so essentially what i'm going to do here is i'm going to experiment with different cap dump circuits here and use that to feed the cap dump and to charge the battery so essentially it's um <clears throat> basically i had other schematics in my um youtube about reactive power supplies at 40 ma and you can use diodes to get your dc and even capacitors to filter it out but even at 40 ma what happens is every time I, I bring it to i get a lot less by using traditional methods by the time i bring this down to dc i'm left with maybe 20 ma if i'm left and even though i've been able to run my dc voltage um uh, generator pulse generators they work very poorly I might just be able to get a tiny spark kind of like just like hitting a 9 volt battery I, I just when I when I convert to DC you know small lambs motors and that is fine but anything heavy with this kind of stuff the current just isn't there so I figured instead of trying to lose you know essentially half of it by converting it to DC let's work with the magnetics keep it at 60 Hertz as much as I can bring up that that potential and then use the displacement current which seems to be pretty good here to charge because capacitors charge great with displacement current and they'll dump that uh, joule so essentially what we're doing is um like tom bearden says if you can move a joule of energy around the circuit there's no laws that tell you you can't put it in one point and then move it around to another point and then bounce it back and then send it back to the front without losing or you know statistically very little maybe only losing one or two percent of that jewel and it comes back to the front now obviously during that trip there was displacement there was work that was done so you want to tap into that work essentially and do something with it like stepping up the potential and then charging capacitors so we don't violate any laws of physics here at all we're just doing a very efficient so obviously it would be um um not fair to say over unity because it would appear as over unity if you're using the grid obviously because of the ping pong action but if you're using a normal generator that ping pong is going to go back into your input bus and is going to just make your system more efficient which is still good at the end right but you'll still have to figure out a mechanism to resonance amplification and whatnot to make up for that two or three percent loss obviously but true understanding of Tom Bearden's asymmetrical regaging it's not that difficult if that is your goal so um, here is not the goal of having a self-running system even though with some modifications it pretty pretty could well be I just want to be able to use the power that I have here from the mains more efficiently so that I don't have to pay as much for charging my 12 volt battery then I could run you know my 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 big laptop and my equipment and whatnot off the inverter you know so just to show you what i'm doing that seems to be working right and of course i got some parts on ebay waiting i'm gonna have some control panels and switches and all that and mount all this on the board so i'm just experimenting right now with some possible configurations and it seems to work pretty good I'm eventually going to replace the um, spark gap dumps with SCR mechanisms, Bedini style, because the um, spark discharge tubes have so many hours, 200 or 2,000, I think it's 200 or something, and then they're no good no more. 
Same thing with neons, right? They depolarize after a while. So I'm just going to use a few zeners and an LED to trigger the, um, like Bedini did, this optical trigger essentially. And that'll fire the SCR at what I want, 24 volts or whatever. And I'm gonna have a series of them all isolated with diodes mounted in a box or something. And that's gonna be my battery charger essentially. So, um, yeah, going to be able to charge batteries for very, very, very little input. So, I hope you enjoyed just putting the information there, like always. And thank you for watching, folks.